Hey, what's up, everybody? I was trying to figure out how much of this I was going to keep this raw. And also, I need an introduction, I think, at some point. But right now, I'm going to... Um, I just wanted to share something that's been on my heart for a while and that I think is important that I'm sure other Christians and other believers have experienced themselves. Um, I didn't want to edit this video. I just wanted to upload something, um, something raw because it'll be uh, more real, I think. And a lot can come from that in a good way, maybe in a bad way too, but we're going to pray that it come in a good way. So I'm mostly just going to be reading from my notes here, something that I drew up here. It's more of an essay really, but I'll try to go through it quick, guys. So try to hang on. Um, don't click away yet. And we're. I'm just going to try to like read through it. Um, and, you know, try to paraphrase most of it. But yeah, it's important. So let's pray first. I'd say. <clears throat> oh, also my voice is like this because I've been sick. And um, I don't know what's going on. I, I don't have a fever, but I lost my voice a couple of days ago. And I just had like a runny nose, like cold-like symptoms for some weird reason. Minus the fever, which is weird. I think it's the pollen. Um, so without further ado, Lord... I come before you today to praise you, to worship you, to glorify your precious, glorious name, Lord, to say that you are God, to say that nothing compares to you. You are worthy of all praise, Lord. Forgive me of any and all sin, Lord. Um, show me in the intent of my heart and continue to show me the way one day at a time, Lord. Give me the faith to continue to walk with you each and every day to fight this good fight the race set before us um and just thank you for all your blessings thank you that i'm alive that i took a deep breath just now the lord well here i have a thing that i do too lord the the lord is my shepherd i have all that i need that i got from a good friend of mine um so without further ado, Heavenly Father, thank you. And I just pray that this video go well, um, that you also are able to maybe touch other people's hearts through what I'm about to read. Um, Lord, thank you for helping me be careful and diligent with what I use and what I wrote down so that I'm not preaching uh, or not um, you know, talking heresy here, Lord, but that this is simply um, godly and that it's biblical. So I pray that... Um, if it is, if there's anything that is in question that does not line up with your doctrine, with biblical doctrine, good biblical doctrine, that, you know, someone stopped me. But, Lord, I, I prayed about it and I was careful. So just thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> so, I'm mostly just going to be reading, but genuine Christian care. I want to start off by quoting from this, Mark 12, 30, 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. People always talk about Christians, how Christians are hypocrite and they're quick to point the finger at the people of the church, of the Christian church. Granted, I know we're all hypocrites. I'm a hypocrite at times. That's why we've all fallen short and are in need of a savior, Jesus Christ. In fact, we're all sinners in need of a savior, um, Romans 3, 10 through 12, as it is written, there's no one righteous, not even one. There's no one who understands. There's no one who seeks God. All have turned away and they have together become worthless. There's no one who does good, not even one. Romans 3, 10 through 12. But that's why we need the atoning power of Jesus Christ. According to John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh crap. I scrolled down too far. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> So, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This was so that we would be made holy through Jesus Christ because that was the standard, so that we could live eternally with God and not separated from God via living in eternal hell. Also, as a side note, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I highly recommend you do that. I can provide some YouTube video links touching on that topic more in depth, but also I would recommend downloading the Bible app or getting yourself a Bible and opening up to the books of John chapter 3, Romans chapter 6, and also spend some extra time in Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. 
Um, so I say all that to say that we're all hypocrites at the end of the day. You know, we're quick to point the finger. Yes, I know. So I just want to want y'all to know that I understand that because I can be a hypocrite too at times. Okay, before going into the topic full on. So now let's dissect that common phrase people use further: Christians are hypocrites. I was asking God the same thing here recently. A follow-up question came to mind that ties in with this one also. Why do people leave the church? Because I've left the church in the past too. For long periods of time. So why do some people leave the church? Today I was thinking about some personal stuff that I've been going through lately amidst my separation. I was also thinking about things I went through as a Christian before all that, throughout the years as a whole but then even stuff I've gone through over the years while being a Christian. I was asking God about it and I was pointed to scripture and I was trying to figure out why exactly do people call Christians hypocrites? I wanted to dissect these questions that all closely relate. Often the people asking these questions were Christians, aren't sure if they're Christians, are going through a rough time, or are self-professed atheists or agnostic, whether the case, whatever the case, and they themselves know they're not perfect. They themselves know they may be hypocrites at times, at least those of those groups, those of these groups who have some level of self-awareness. So I asked God about it. I asked God about it because for the past several years, I've dealt with a lot of hurt from other Christians, which is bound to happen in the church, by the way. As I was saying earlier, none of us are perfect. But over the years, I noticed the correlation in the things that were happening to me and frankly to other Christians whom I've met who've shared pers similar experiences as to one of the main causes of this hurt, these wounds by other brothers and sisters in Christ. Through recent prayer and asking God, he showed me the word care. But it can also mean love. So literally, like just the word care came in big, bold letters in my head upon praying on it. See, I think God wants us to know, and he wanted me to know that love and care are synonymous. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is, and I'm going to read it here too. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. In these verses, God is telling us that love is not only an emotion, it is mainly an action, a decision to place the state of your heart in alignment with what God wants. What he wants when it comes to how we should love is outlined in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. So my, my wife, whom I'm uh, separated from, by the way, um, I don't know if I should say that. Does, does that really matter, I guess? Becca, the mother of our daughter, Rosie, who I'm currently separated from, used to ask me, um, I said it again, Levi, check your heart. Yeah, she used to, like, usually in those instances, it was when we were amidst an argument. That's what God wants us to do. Psalm 139, 23 through 24. Search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there is any wicked or hurt way hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. So that's God telling us to check our hearts, the state of our hearts. Because in it, it controls like the rest of our actions. Our actions follow suit depending on the state of our heart. So that's important. So speaking on love and care over the years, but especially throughout my separation, I've been experiencing and noticing a huge lack of genuine care for people by some people of the church. And frankly, I'm going to step out and say that this, is, this lack of genuine care and love is coming from a lot of people in the church. Now, full disclaimer here, I'm guilty of this too. And the Lord has been teaching me how to have genuine care for people lately, how to love people. So you might ask, well, what do you mean by that? From meeting and talking with others on their own personal experience, as well, I think the best way of illustrating what I mean by lack of genuine care for people um, is with some examples. Some of these are personal to me. Some of these are stories other people have shared with me about their personal experiences. Some of these I've heard being talked about in sermons. So these could include not checking up on people, 
That could mean a phone call or a text to someone who you know deals with depression or anxiety, or even if they don't deal with this stuff, just checking up on people means a great deal of something to whoever's being checked on. It shows them that someone cares. Romans 12, 10. Now I'm going to read you two versions of this. The, um, the NIV says in Romans 12, 10, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, honor one another above yourselves. The English standard version says Romans 12, 10, same verse, love one another with brotherly love, with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. <clears throat> Investing in meaningful, godly time with people. God wants us to do this. He tells us to do this. You guys, people notice this stuff. They notice the real priorities people have in their lives. They notice it at church, and they notice it outside of church. I'm not trying to tell you or anyone for that matter to make it a habit of looking for the faults in people regarding this area, but when this becomes a habit of people, it's a problem. It's a huge problem. Here's another example. Not being truly invested in other people's lives other than your own. This could also mean you're there physically with someone, but maybe often you're not there mentally and emotionally with them. And when you reply to whatever was communicated to you, you aren't able to truly engage with them because you were not paying attention or didn't truly care about what they were talking about. This could also be you or me not asking about a person's life or whatever person is talking about in a simple conversation. Like, you know, it's generally one-sided and one person is like, asking you all these things but you're not really following up with that like um taking an interest in the uh, the other individual the other subject in this uh, conversation um now i'm talking specifically here about uh, that usually the context here is um communication between two parties too um so galatians 6 2 Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Now, I'm not saying that you're fighting other people's battles, okay? Everyone has their own unique, um, everyone has their own battle that they have to fight in this world, and they're either choosing sin or they're choosing righteousness. And that's another topic, so we're not really going to go into that, but I'm talking about, like, genuinely showing people that you care about them. Um, and these are some of the examples people notice dude like people guys i'm telling you people notice so the next uh here's the next point spending too much time criticizing others romans 2 1 you therefore have no excuse you who pass judgment on someone else for at whatever point you judge the other you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things okay so again we're talking specific context here i'm not going to break this one down but there's a balance in this and if most of what you're doing is just criticizing other people then you're basically going against what this verse says and this is just another example truly of like do you honestly care about them or are you just trying to like make yourself look good and prop yourself up you know to like a pharisee and there again there's very specific context there um there's a balance there too and i'm not talking about not correct i'm not saying don't go out and correcting people don't go out correcting people that's not what i'm saying I'm not saying not to do that. I'm saying like if that it's if that's most of what you you spend your time doing. Um Christianity, the things of the Lord, everything that he said is whatever is good, whatever is lovely, all that. The good news, the gospel. There's so much to Christianity besides just criticizing people. And I think some people spend way too much time, if not most of their time, doing that. So, here's the next one. Let's see. Hang on, guys. I'm trying to get to the next part that I wrote. Okay. Only spending your time, money, or effort with people who benefit you in some shape or form. And I've definitely been guilty of this, guys. I'm not even going to lie. Let's bring up two different sets of people. So I'm just going to pose two different. Um, so we're going to pose a hypothetical scenario here. Let's say, for instance, that there are two different, two groups of people you have the chance of having a growing relationship with. John Doe knows about cars. Billy Bob is a successful businessman who knows about the sales and business world. Jimmy Choo is a renowned psychologist. 
there's a second group of three people. I won't list the names because at this point it's irrelevant. The three people in this group have knowledge that does not benefit you, or so you think. Maybe one of them doesn't even have a job, perhaps not in a very practical sense. But what if they benefit from you? And we'll say it again. But what if they benefit from you? What if spiritually you benefit from them? What if spiritually or even practically you have knowledge they need? If we asked ourselves, which group of people would I most likely be spending time with regarding these two groups? What would we choose, honestly? The truth is, they benefit me because, or they benefit you because, according to Romans 8.28, all things work together for good for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. So, God blesses things in mysterious ways and in ways that you wouldn't even possibly imagine. But then when you see it, you're like, whoa, that that happened and that was like, and God did that and God used that and wow, and it's you guys have no idea how many times that's happened in my life um, and how many times I've tried to like lead myself and then I just got more depressed or anxious or I just like did something else that was stupid. And But that's just another great example there. A great example of why some people, you know, what the theme is, genuine care. Why some people don't think that some Christians don't genuinely care. Or why some Christians might be hypocrites. Or why the church gets labeled like that. Um, now as a reminder, I just want you guys to keep in mind everything else we went over at the beginning of the video. Um, so that is not what I'm calling the church. So let's, but yeah, as a whole, but we're not perfect. So this is really a message to the church. So here's, and to people, to anyone really, this is the last point here. Um, I think this one's a personal favorite here for me. Ignoring people when they reach out to you or need a favor from you. So taking days to reply. Now, I'm not saying boundaries isn't a thing, people, but we're talking about a specific context here. So, a Christian pastor, Christian pastor Paul Washer, once gave an illustration in one of his sermons to an audience of other preachers and spiritual leaders. In the illustration, he painted this picture, and I'm paraphrasing what he said. You're speaking at a conference full of fine, revered Christian men, all of whom are great and well-known spiritual leaders. It's the end of the conference for the day, and everyone, everyone's decided to go out to eat at a restaurant. As you proceed to head to the restaurant alongside these great men, a man from your local congregation church walks in stating that he has a dilemma and he needs someone to talk to, but that it's not an emergency. Now you know that this man personally, you know this man personally, and you know that he is one of the most troubled persons in your congregation and also one of the most non-growing Christians. Now, let me say that again. Now, you know that this man personally, you know this man personally, and you know that he is one of the most troubled persons in your congregation and also one of the most non-growing Christians. You then look up to hear from some of the other pastors you admire. Hey, are you going? Are you coming or what? They're already halfway out the door. You're faced with two decisions here. You can either stay here with this man and potentially have a conversation that will look very similar to others you've had with him continuously. Or are you going to go eat with the big boys? Paul Washer said, um, told that story in a, in a sermon. Um, but, so... Most importantly, are we remaining consistent with all of these? Are we either doing these too often or doing the opposite? Which would be a good thing by actively loving people? Some other stuff I wrote down. So I just made like a note real quick in Romans 12, like regarding Romans 12, 10 as well. Well, the majority, like 
all of this is just my notes. Like I wrote an essay basically. Um, and then I referencing, uh, Paul Washer, um, in a couple of his sentences, but, uh, Romans twelve ten. So I think when it talks about be devoted to one another in brotherly love, honor one another above yourselves, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. So those are like the, um, Romans twelve ten. I just read it twice, like just two different versions. Um, outdo meaning there is a duty to be devoted to one another, a call to action to serve one another and help out with whatever needs your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ may need. It doesn't mean you're fighting their spiritual battles, but it does mean you're checking up on people. You're showing attentiveness when they speak to you, whether in person or online or over the phone. If they need a favor and you know legitimately that you're able to help out, help them out instead of making an excuse for why you can't. I'm guilty of this stuff, guys, honestly, and the Lord's been convicting me of it more lately. I understand that we're all busy. Life, responsibilities, shoot, if you have like kids, grandkids, your job. But God wants us to have genuine care for our neighbor since he tells us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Genuine. And God wants us to check our hearts in this too. So I think something important here now is to like follow it up with asking yourself, do I genuinely care about other people outside of my inner circle? Do I genuinely care about people who aren't related to me? Do I genuinely care about that homeless man that asked me for money a few hours ago at Walmart and I told him, sorry, dude, I don't have cash and just shrugged him off. Those are just examples, but the point is genuine care means we're invested in the lives of other people and we're not just emotionally or mentally absent. That's what love means, right? Also too, what does being invested means? Mean. Genuine care is love, and that's what God expects of us. And people notice that. People feel that. And God sees it. I think we can find the answer to that part in 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Wait. No, my bad. Yeah, those are the end of my notes. 1 Thessalonians 5.11. I just want to end with that. Um, therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing see that's what you happen that's what happens when you read most of your essay verbatim although not all of it you know I added to it in some instances like because thoughts came and the Lord gave me some thoughts like hey you should say this okay yeah and then this and then this you know which is the amazing thing of the Holy the amazing part of having the Holy Spirit uh, dwell within you Oh, I think it's Acts 2.38. Maybe I should look it up just in case. Um, it's a really good verse. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, and this just goes back to John 3.16 and salvation. You know, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So... I think that's all that's all folks but I thank the Lord I thank the Lord because I do have uh, some Christians in my life who genuinely care about me who do check on me um, who love me I know they do thank you God for that I'm thinking about them now and they're great people and I just challenge you to do the same to reach out to people but to show them that you genuinely care about them that you love them um, and to just force yourself to come out of yourself and I need to do this too and put your eyes on other people on the Lord first and then on other people um, but that's all guys um This has been fun. It's been a blast. It's Miguel Levi Gomez here. Levi JD. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell on your way out the door. I'm definitely going to be uploading more uh, content on this 
because I think the Lord wants me to for sure. No, not I think I know. I know. Um, and I just want to keep this channel clean too. So I think the Lord would really honor that too. Like the Lord would bless that for sure. And I just want to honor him at the end of the day because leading myself doesn't work. And leading yourself doesn't work, dude. So, but that's another topic. So we'll get to it at another time. See you guys.